And indeed, while well, not many people are present in the room, we have quite a few uh, following us, I Almost see, at home. <laughs> at home or, or wherever you are. Uh, so we'll open the floor to questions now. Okay, I see a first question uh, by Catherine. Uh, hello. Uh, Commissioner, uh, can I ask you um, about uh, cyber security in particular? I mean, the Commission has encouraged um, the, the idea of you know, future technologies, digitalization, and the Internet of Things. Uh, is this now actually a product safety issue? And um, should the Commission look again at uh, this and maybe uh, see how, you know, just very ordinary domestic goods could actually be maybe dangerous because uh, of cybersecurity issues? Thank you. No, thanks for the question, because I've said we, we try to uh, organize uh, for the moment an evaluation about uh, the possible revision of the General Product Safety Directive, but it's due to the fact that uh, one of the main uh, new elements is the uh, arrival of many new technologies uh, in the products coming to the market, and certainly uh, I mentioned the um, artificial intelligence, and it will be uh, very important because for the, the next years we will try to uh, take the consumers on board on two uh, very important transitions. The Green Deal, of course, on one hand, but also the digital transition on the other hand. But if we want to do that, we need to build a real trust with the consumers. On the Green Deal, I don't want to uh, uh, elaborate on this with better information, but also on the digital transition. If the consumers are in front of the new products, they need to have a real trust in such a kind of products. And so we need maybe to organize some changes in the uh, general product safety directive. And it's the reason why I've said in my conclusion that I invite all the stakeholders to take part in the actual consultation about the new consumer agenda because it will be an important part of the new consumer agenda to take into account the new technologies in the development of new products and to see what kind of safety it's possible to guarantee to the consumers and what kind of soft, also of liability is possible to put into place for the people responsible for the development of those products and maybe inside the products for the development of uh, new uh, AI uh, applications. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question comes from uh, Marine Laoshi. Marine. Bonjour. J'espère que vous Hello. I hope you can hear me. Marine Laouche, France Press. I have a question about the work you've been doing on coronavirus-related products. You mentioned those in your introduction. Could you tell us a little bit more, particularly about what you've been doing to identify rogue traders? And you talked about cooperation with online platforms, too, and the withdrawing of millions of products. Are these related to coronavirus, or is it something broader? Well, thank you very much for the question. During the coronavirus crisis, we've come across a great many uh, new arrivals, adverts for products to fight the virus, some of them claiming to be miracle products, curing the virus or preventing the virus. And I also talked about face masks and um, disinfectants and other products to protect first-line workers and other citizens. And I said that we had got straight in touch with the main platforms to work on the subject together. What we've done is that we have asked them to withdraw very quickly indeed uh, a certain number of adverts on those online platforms. We've also looked into working with partners outside the European Union 
um, and the circulation of information within the Un European Union if we have an alert on a particular product during the crisis. We use the rapid alert system, which I explained, and which can quickly inform all the member states. We also have to work with other countries outside Europe. I've been in touch with uh, heads of customs in China to draw attention to the work that needs to be done locally in the interests of both partners. The Chinese obviously want our consumers to trust their products and work has to be done upstream to identify um, the producers and the traders and, and we were able to find those manufacturers in many cases. What we have to do first of all is to better inform people about the rules that have to be complied with so that uh, they are in keeping with European safety rules. If they then flout those rules we can go beyond that and there have been uh, surveys relating to the arrival on our market of a number of products with security or safety issues. And we're going to continue our work in that area. As you know, the uh, crisis is not yet completely over, and uh, tests will be carried out on coronavirus-related products in the months to come. It's important that we should work on this particular strand. In the fight against the coronavirus, several million ads have been pulled. Things have gone well. We'll see if we need to go further um, through voluntary uh, cooperation or perhaps regulation. Thank you very much. Question. The next question, David Carreta. Oui, bonjour, David Carreta, Radio. Yes, hello. David Carreta, Radio Radicale. I have a question about a different subject. I don't know whether I can ask it now or whether you want me to wait. Let's see. Perhaps there are other questions then. No, for the moment, nobody else is in the queue, so go ahead. Thank you. The subject is the rule of law, and in particular a country that isn't often uh, mentioned or hasn't been in recent times, Malta. Above and beyond the uh, murder of Corano Galicia, Malta has a migration policy which um, often diverges from European standards. Um, pushbacks, for example, refoulement. For the moment, there is a vessel with 50 people on board uh, which uh, is waiting at sea. A former Maltese official um, has threatened Nello Scavo, an Italian journalist, for his investigations. I'd like to know whether you think that there is a rule of law issue here, something that needs to be tackled urgently. Well, on your specific question, I'm afraid I can't answer. I may be able to answer later. I am not aware of this situation. When it comes to the rule of law in Malta, well, my first reaction is to say that Malta will be cheated exactly like um, all other states in the report to be presented um, in, in, in September, which will then go to the uh, European Parliament and national parliaments too, so that there can be a discussion on the rule of law. On Malta more particularly, in recent months, we have been working on two particular aspects, uh, DG Justice and myself, the legal and electoral reforms. You know that following the arrival of a new government in Malta, a series of reforms were proposed, 
uh, relating to the electoral system and the justice system and these reforms have been discussed with the Venice Commission at the Council of Europe and um, I laid a lot of emphasis on that when I was talking to the Maltese Authority. Now there are about um, 10 uh, bills for presentation to Parliament. We with the Venice Council will have a, a look at whether they uh, comply with necessary standards for the organisation of the justice system and the electoral system in Malta. So that's the first strand, and that is ongoing. The reforms are underway, and we will uh, go on checking on whether they meet the required standards. And then the programme for the acquisition of nationality through investment. And there, too, we have discussions going on with the Maltese minister to look at the changes underway in this investment programme which gives access to nationality. It's national competence but with European aspects because it automatically gives access to um, EU and, and, and Schengen um, nationality. So we would wish to move towards phasing out this type of programme and we'll be looking at what can be done to improve the draft. With regard to your particular question, because you mentioned a situation um, relating to migration, I'm afraid I can't answer you at this press conference. I hope to be able to reply afterwards. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any further questions. Um, if that is not the case, then thank you very much, Commissioner. But maybe just uh, to, to show you that uh, it's dangerous for everybody what we have said uh, today, uh, I've shown some uh, elements for the, for the children, of course, with some toys, uh, but you, you have also some uh, elements for all the, 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 the possible consumers. If you see, I said uh, in my remarks, some chargers. If you have, of course, some risks about the use of uh, chargers for mobile phone or for other kind of uh, uh, products, it's very uh, dangerous, of course, not only for the human beings, but sometimes to put the fire in some place, in some houses. And so we try to exchange on, on this, but you see that a major part of our examples are concerning the children. I want to insist on this because uh, we try to continue to work uh, on it and uh, I'm sure that we will have a better collaboration year after year with all the different actors, the platforms and the member states to be sure that we will protect all the consumers but certainly the most vulnerable consumers. There are different categories of vulnerable consumers, but certainly the children. Just to show that, but of course uh, the um, services are at the disposal of all the journalists if you want to have more details about the products that we have detected or uh, that we are working on. Thank you very much for your uh, participation today. Thank you very much, Commissioner, and you can indeed consult the press material also online with a number of fact sheets which also covers all of these products in greater detail. Thank you. Thank you.